We'll just jump right straight to it. Yeah. Why, uh, why are you running for Secretary of State in a state like Georgia? Well, I've been a lawmaker for the past five years, and every year that I have served as a lawmaker, I've seen bills introduced to restrict access to the ballot box. And of course, nothing like we saw in 2020 and 2021. I was there when they sent Rudy Giuliani and Trump's legal team into our legislature to try and invalidate the will of the people. And I was there when Republicans passed Senate Bill 202, which was originally a two-page bill turned into, into a 98-page voter suppression bill. So for me, it's very simple. My message is clear. I believe every eligible Georgian should be able to exercise the freedom to vote and the freedom to vote without barriers. What what is it with Georgia? Why are why do you think that the Republicans? I mean, because this has been before the recent big lie, mm -hmm. the 2020, the January 6. Uh, Brian Kemp and Raffensperger have been doing this long before them. Why 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 are they doing this so hard in Georgia? Mm -hmm. We are a diverse state, and we are a changing state that has changed very rapidly, and we know that when we mobilize voters and we build the broad-based coalition that has been built in the state of Georgia, which brings together. Um, black Georgians, brown Georgians, young Georgians, progressive Georgians, rural, urban, suburban. We know that when we come together on shared values, we can deliver a win in Georgia. And that's exactly what we did in 2020 and exactly what we did in 2021. So the tide is changing in the state of Georgia and the writing is on the wall for them. In the last 10 years, we added a million people to our population and that population growth was a million people of color. So they understand that it's only a matter of time before we change the power at the state level. Now, thanks to SB202, as you said in your speech outside, and as you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> where I work, who I work with, um, there's, a, there's a special class of uh, vigilante that's, uh, that's in Georgia. Can you speak about them? Yeah, so one of the provisions of Senate Bill 202 is the ability for an individual to have unlimited mass voter challenges and the local board of elections are required to review those mass voter challenges under Senate Bill 202. Mm -hmm. And what we are seeing is these vigilantes who are conspiracy theorists and uh, are far right, they are going before our local election boards and they are challenging the eligibility of Georgians in mass. Now, we have federal law that protects the voters from voter maintenance 90 days before a major election. Yeah. And that matters because we do not want a sitting secretary of state to use that to massively purge voters off the voter rolls. This is a workaround where they go to the local election boards instead and try to accelerate the process mm -hmm. right before a major election is happening. We know at least 65,000 Georgians have been challenged. We know that the methodology is flawed. They are using uh, tactics like the National Change of Address database, the same database that was used to try to challenge the results of the election in 2020. And it is often flawed, erroneous, and these are eligible voters that they are trying to actively roll off the rolls right before a major election. And so we know the stories of some of these voters a military overseas voter, a college student who attends Morehouse College of Medicine who found out her eligibility was challenged when she was actually trying to cast her ballot and she was not given a reason why. A naturalized citizen who voted in 2016 when she showed up to vote in Fulton County, they told her her eligibility had challenged and she was not given a reason why. There was it one single individual who challenged the eligibility of 31,000 voters in one county alone. Mm -hmm. what, do you believe that these challenges are legal? Uh, at a federal level, or, or even do you think that this law will stand up? I certainly believe that this law should be challenged because what federal law tells us is we can't have systematic mass purging of rolls before a major election in that 90-day blackout period. And this is a mass systematic purging of voters. What is helpful in the state of Georgia is the majority of our local election boards are requiring probable cause. Mm -hmm. They're requiring some sort of evidence. But you put a bad actor or bad actors into a local election board, then voters may not be protected in the way that they currently are with the decision-making process. So it is really important that when we write laws that we understand the consequences of those laws and how we protect Georgians from losing their right to vote, being disenfranchised, but also the very nature of voter intimidation, of voter confusion, of creating chaos, of taking election workers away from their very important job when we're facing an election administration crisis. And this law has blown the door open for all of those things to occur. Can I ask one more? Okay. Um, 
Do you worry for election day? We see in Arizona men with guns showing up and these vig you know, vigilantes are talking and talking about 30,000 pe wrong people on the voter rolls just in one county. Are you worried about uh, what it might look for ele on election day? Yeah, I, I think that we should anticipate and be prepared for what it looks like on election day and in the aftermath. We already know in the state of Georgia in 2020 and 2021, we started to see some of these things on the ground in the state of Georgia. For instance, in Fulton County, there was an evening when workers were trying to bring back the drop boxes and deposit those ballots, and they were blocked by vigilantes who were trying to prevent them from moving forward. And so we have to be very aware of the environment that we are living under and in a state like Georgia and be prepared for all scenarios that may happen both on election day and in the aftermath.